r slash dead bedrooms. Current carrot 1678 says. My wife caught me taking care of myself. My wife 35 female and I 35 male have been together for 15 years total. We both grew up in Christian households. We both don't really have a high sex drive. We recently just had our second child a little of two months ago. So we obviously haven't had relations for some time and I completely understand that. I have been showing affection and being flirty with her but she just gave birth not too long ago so I'm going to push the issue of having sex. She also is breastfeeding so she doesn't really want to be touched right now do that. And I totally get that. So all that being said. She recently caught me taking care of myself, she got upset and left the room crying. I'm at a loss. I can't take care of my needs without my wife being upset and we can't have sex because she isn't ready slash we don't have any alone time to be able to do that. It is just a lose lose situation. Dead Libum says. She's probably just feeling extra emotional due to all the hormones, you're definitely not in the wrong. No safety 6803 says. Yes, use your words, talk to each other about your needs, and how you are feeling. This is a season in life, where sex isn't going to be able to be on the front burner. Figure out how you can get to the other side together. Current Carrot 1678 says. I wish that was true. She just doesn't like me doing that activity. I'm just supposed to have any activities. CF19950517 says. So post history indicated you struggle with erections for your wife, but not for strippers or porn, and fantasize about cheating on her. But she just had a baby. A whole ass human left her body. A human she made, and now her body is all over the place, and you stroke one out to porn, but could not get hard for her just a few days ago and a few before, that you were posting, that you wish you could try dom sub things, because she isn't doing it for you anymore. It looks like you are fishing for people, to tell you this behavior is okay. How about you go help your wife raise a kid? If the sex slash religion is such a big deal leave and get a divorce, but getting attention online is not the way to go. Despectful says. Hey here it is this is like one one hundredth of the story he's put out here. I often wonder how many of these sad stories have backgrounds like this as well. His poor wife. CF19950517 says. That's the sad thing about this mostly here we only see one side. But yeah this was see through honestly. I feel like someone on this situation would have absolutely have had the right to masturbate privately and I would have not said a thing. But the post history makes it clear that is not what is going on here. This woman, once again post history says to kids, has two kids with this guy and this is how he treats her online. By slandering her by saying she doesn't like him masturbating, when I think she caught him commenting shit, and drew a line, and was actually maybe a little bit disappointed, that he is spineless. Despectful says. Bro. This is not the whole story and you know it. Your past post history paints an entirely different picture, of how awful you are to her, how you straight up proposition other women online for sex acts, and so forth. Be honest, this ain't it. Diology says. Have you two ever discussed masturbation openly? Or have you both just assumed it was something everyone just did? Crazy how many things should be discussed openly and without judgment at least once. But yeah, go team self care. Klee91 says. Maybe it's because she knows how you whine to naked girls online about being fat and bald with a small dick. Maybe she knows you wanna suffocate under a stranger's ass. Maybe it's because you tell other women you give anything to bury your face in their asses. Just a hunch though. Cupcake2635 says. Read this guy's post history. He should probably just leave, because he's not happy, and he's not sexually fulfilled, and he's trying to blame his wife for it. 
ad for 7593 says. With all due respect she is seriously out of line. Return Kitten says. Were you watching porn? Question mark? That might have some to do with it too. Severe at 3540 says. Context here would imply she probably has a church view of masturbation, which has never been a good view. Additionally, she could be thinking she isn't good enough, you're finding her repulsive etc etc. If you don't talk about it, and tell her about how you want to support her in this time, and not pressure her, she will likely not see it any other way. I'm not saying she is right, you have body autonomy after all. But remember the church context, she likely doesn't understand body autonomy, or believe in it, after all, you're some kind of temple right. Edit to provide my own context. 37 male, here, grew up and lived in the church for 34 years, escaped 3 years ago. r slash dead bedrooms. Mysterious Willow 85 says. Every day it's something new. Upset stomach. Back hurts. Rough day at work. Tired. Ankle hurts. Allergies are bothering him. Etc. They're all legitimate reasons, but they are just all one after another and sex never happens. Bed at Wizra says. I gave up. I don't bother anymore. I told her, if she wants me, she has to let me know, because I'm not going to try anymore. I then got in trouble for making her feel guilty. Wunion256 says. The list is endless. Dranija Mesto says. Something, Aka the real reason, is clearly holding him back. Hoping he explores it for both your sakes. One aspect that doesn't get talked about enough for dead bedroom is a need for time limits. 1. Because life's too short. 2. Because partners who have avoidant attachment styles will happily kick the can down the road until one of you dies. And 3. Passion absolutely can die if it's not reciprocated. I'm in situation 3 right now, and it is awful. Mission Suggestion 12 says. Sick of the excuses. I totally get it. Morning Leather says. Always something. Always. Martin Beck says. Are they actually doing anything about the ankle pain or the allergies? If this is 8pm sudden onset of illness you have a problem you need to confront. Does the stomach upset, ankle pain, and every other vague malady only occur when you're together? Does it prevent them from doing other things that are important to them? If they are perfectly health all day long, and have the energy for a million things, and then right at 8pm every night they have a malady, but they're great the next morning and... They can go, do that thing that's important to them, but then again that night at 8pm they're unfortunately just not feeling good again. If they complain about their allergies when you're around, but they never quite make it to an allergist, or remember to take the Zatec every day. If they complain about their ankle when you're around, but they don't actually rest, ice, and elevate regularly. Then you have to consider the strong possibility they are faking illness, in order to, to get out of perceived obligations in the... Nomix9367 says. I don't even try anymore, no point even if it does happen it's just empty promises, while we are in the middle then we take weeks or months off. She wanted to schedule sex for every Friday. It was said in the middle of 6, and hasn't happened since then. Phoebe Normal says. I get sad, when I see that there are excuses and no initiation, even if his reasonings are valid. I've been there, and the longing for intimacy, and for them to bring it up, when they finally feel well enough to do so, just to have it never come, is a hurt like no other. Leaf Comfortus says. If he wanted to have sex with you he would. Rough day at work, would be a reason to have sex. The only way to not get rejected, is to not initiate. But that in itself is painful on a different level. Storm 14k says. I got to a point where I started just saying sex helps with stress. Sex helps with headaches. Sex is good for the heart. 
sex is good exercise. Of course it was always yay I know and then nothing. I can't remember now when I stopped thinking something was wrong and realized she was just full of it and had no intent to have sex. Acrobatic Money 799 says. If anything like my wife, never has time or energy to spend any time with me, yet she manages to find time and energy for the things that are important to her. Her friends, shopping, a trip, a party, seeing her parents or a slew of other things that she prioritizes as more important to her than me, our relationship or spending time bonding with me. We tell our partners how we really feel, not by saying words, but with our actions. R slash dead bedrooms. The Q Men Strong 7836 says. Vacation observations. I wore a very revealing dress yesterday that requires no bra or underwear. Boobs popping out, high slit, definitely received some second glances while cruising through town which made me feel great. Didn't receive any sort of feedback from the husband until I asked if he liked it. Yes, it's nice that new? I suggested we have sex before dinner because everyone will be showering slash laying down for an hour and he didn't even reply. I was so horny last night I pleasured myself right on our balcony in front of all the boats. And then I told him I did so today so he knows what he's missing. I have offered this man unlimited, endless, no questions asked sexual pleasure and he wants nothing from me. I would give anything to feel as though someone found me attractive and wanted to give my body pleasure. I'm 42, I work out and take really good care of myself and take a lot of pride in my appearance. I love having sex and miss being wanted by someone sexually. I would have sex every day with him, hell there are days I want it twice a day and he wants nothing. I pleasure myself in bed most nights right next to him as he snores and he has no idea. Thebesurdly Normal says. I've never been able to relate to men who say no to a willing partner who has a high libido. I'll never know what that's like. I'm sorry you're going through that. That has to be devastating. Zestiklosika 3359 says. Are you sure he's alive? Wipethodist Away says. That sounds brutal. It's like rejection is sort of the background radiation of your life. You put in all this effort for this guy, and it just bounces off. Even if he doesn't want to have sex, a little hey you look great would be nice, right? At least you'd know you're visible to him. Plus you're on god dang vacation, so it's not like you're both in a routine and on autopilot. One of the drawbacks of this sub is there's all these HLF posts, and it makes you wonder well Jesus Christ there's all these women that have high libidos so how did I frick up my situation so bad that my wife doesn't want to have sex at all? Then you just go through every flaw you've ever had, whether you can help them or not. It's bullshit, of course, but the thought is there, and if you're not vigilant it can get you. Mission Suggestion 12 says... You're going to get so many DMS. Ninja Hidingin Theopan says. This sounds so heartbreaking. Posts like this make me feel like, if you substituted sex or something most people don't like, it becomes obvious why this stuff doesn't work. Like, my husband just isn't interested in cabbage. I make such a lovely cabbage meal, I make sure it's the best presented, well cooked, beautifully garnished cabbage, and nothing. Well no, he doesn't like cabbage. That's what you're working with. No amount of dressing it up is going to change that. Let's see our conch says. Is he on lithium or something? Guy seems crazy to not react to any of that. And I'm sorry. Don't take it on yourself, because your hubby sounds nuts. I'm sure you looked great, and would have had any normal man all over you. Nomix9367 says. Wow I'm sorry sending a virtual hug. How any man could turn that down is more than my brain can process. Perfect placement says. I wish. Critical ad 4665 says. 
I'm so jealous of your husband, he has the dream, and is ignoring it. Technocritic Nihilist says. He takes you for granted. Philly says. Same boat as well. Gosh 29 female. SMQTB says. Jeez, I would love for my partner to do this. Critical Ad 4665 says. I'm so jealous of your husband, he has the dream, and is ignoring it. Critical Ad 4665 says. I'm so jealous of your husband, he has the dream, and is ignoring it. Big Incident 7508 says. I'm in the same boat girl, and I'm 25F. Works to zero says. If only. R slash dead bedrooms. Wonderful pipe says. Never settle for a dead bedroom, the grass is in fact greener on the other side. After two years in a relationship, where sex was always a chore, or non-existent, or I never knew if I was even good at it for her lacking of expression, or her shame because of it, religion issues, yesterday I just got laid with another girl which we've had a crush on each other for some years and Jesus. Mind blowing, I never thought I'd experience someone being so into me, being so turned on, asking for more, enjoying and letting me enjoy feeling desired, is like, I got some of my lost self esteem back not even kidding, but I feel like twice as happy, just for that night listen, life is too short, and there's only one chance, enjoy it. Consistent text 3731 says. Boy. The way you described it, I felt heartfelt joy for you. And sadness, for me myself. I hope someday I will also be able to experience that feeling. Enjoy, that's really great. Stay good life says. It's almost always better and easier to get a new willing partner than it is to fix a dead bedroom. Isim2309 says. Good feeling isn't it, when you find someone who wants you, and gives you what you need. Good for you, and I hope you will have round 2 with your lucky lady. Upset Wolverine4897 says. Good for you, having someone who will blow your mind sexually, and non-sexually is intoxicating. Hold on to her, because finding that is difficult outside of a dead bedroom or a marriage, that you know is doomed. Salamad Engert says. Sometimes, not always. Being single without any successful dating prospects and meaningless hookups isn't exactly what I'd call greener. There's a real chance I don't find someone willing to be in a relationship with me, and who I'm sexually compatible with. So yeah, for some people it's just a different kind of bad. Mobius0R says. Yeah, it's pretty normal, that having sex with a new partner gives you that. NRE is cool. Background set 6515 says. I'm working towards this. I'm 18 and I have been with my current 20 male partner since I was 14. He used to be very attracted to me, but since I've moved in, his drive for me is 100% non-existent. He still had drive for porn and other women, but he doesn't even get hard seeing my naked body anymore, and it's exhausting fighting tooth and nail to remain in a relationship where I'm not wanted. I hope to be like you soon. According Hippo 7935 says. I hope once in my life have that feeling. I don't think it will ever happen. But I'm so, so that you found it. I have been with my wife for over 20 years, and have never felt that. I'm always the one that starts 6, and it had only ever felt one sided. Well one time it felt almost a two way street, and then I looked back on it, and she was just very drunk, and it was not truly her. So if actually felt worse, and it felt, like she is actively trying to put this front on, and keep me away. So 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 happy you found it, even if it is just once. Vegas and Kmeatus says. Awesome source. Deleted says. Awesome for you. I hope it continues. I missed that opportunity a long time ago and now raising grandkids, that I would never leave her to do alone I'm stuck. I've learned to have much better orgasms alone, 
but that is only a small piece of what's missing. R slash dead bedrooms. Rude individual 7928 says. Is it me? I have been married to my wife for 12 years, we have 3 children with the youngest B9. We have a DB, my wife makes no effort, and when we do, have sex it is basically her assuming the starfish pose. We went from having an amazing sex life, it was spontaneous and wild, she would send me provocative pics, when I was at work and she wanted sex daily, even after we had kids. She ended up falling victim to depression, and was diagnosed bipolar and suffering from PTSD from events in her earlier life. Since this 5 years ago, and her starting multiple medications, she has no interest in not only sex, but any intimacy at all. A little more info about our living situation. I work an executive position that brings in over 150k per year. This role involves me traveling thousands of kilometers each week and being on call 2-4 hours a day. I have not had a single day without answering calls in over 10 years. My wife has never had a job or contributed financially to our household. The latest I rise is 6am in the morning and I'm the only one in the house awake. I have a coffee and breakfast alone and leave for work without seeing my wife. Sometimes I'm leaving for a week, but this does not change anything. When it is school holiday she does not even get out of bed until 9.30am. When it comes to the bedroom she makes no effort, if anything it is the opposite. She will never wear anything different from her hideous PJS. She knows how simple it is to drive me crazy, a white crop top and nice panties, but will never make the effort. I try to be spontaneous and get pushed away. I love my wife and still see her as the most attractive lady on earth, but am left feeling unwanted and unappreciated. Eachson says. Mental illness and the meds kills libido for a lot of people. You didn't say ages. Libido also often slows down with weight gain and age. My wife was a Sam a few years and those years made her miserable. She was much happier when she went back to work, had the focus and sense of purpose, and pay that come with holding down a job. My wife and I have a dead bedroom, but at least she makes great money and sets a good example for our kids. So your wife probably had the trifecta of low libido, meds that smash her libido, possibly in worse physical condition than earlier in life, and feeling the ennui of middle age at a time when her kids don't need much from her. Any chance you can gently help her find part time employment? As for you I don't have much advice you are going to want to hear. The easiest way to find sex is to have sex with a new woman, who wants to have sex with you. You could probably pull that off easily on your business travels. Turning your wife into the highly sexual woman you married will be much more difficult and maybe not possible at all. Blaswigan says. It's the meds. It's the meds, it's the meds, too many doctors take zero account of the very real decrease in libido side effects antidepressant meds often cause. Theory 83 says. I mean if we are being honest here there is a lot at play here. She's got health slash medication issues, you seem to be a workaholic and or you're away a lot. I'm guessing you two need to clear the air in a lot of ways that have nothing to do with sex. Jack Midwest says. I usually encourage people to find as much blame to output on themselves as they can as this empowers you to create change. However your situation is much different. You still need to work on yourself, feeling undesirable because someone with diagnosed mental health issues who is clearly symptomatic not being interested in you should be understandable. Your self-worth and how you view yourself relies on validation to some extent, the less that is true the better your life will be. How much have you educated yourself about her conditions? If she is bipolar and in a depressed state, a complete lack of libido is not uncommon. Likely, she is also on medications that can lower libido as well. For your benefit, her benefit, and kids benefit she needs help getting the proper treatment. Hungry Apartment 8367 says. Does her financial contributions, or lack thereof, contribute to your dead bedroom? I'm just curious as to why it was mentioned. 
not Karen93 says. It's easy to be fun and spontaneous when you don't have kids, and especially when you don't have bipolar disorder, PTSD, and depression. She needs help. Soup says. Why do you certain men always complain about how much you work? You would work the same, even if you weren't married. Always try to guilt trip the workload that you chose. Have you ever asked her to get up with you then go back to bed, when you are off to work, just curious? Just seems all this health, huh, and work, you, there is a disconnect. Must connect then communicate to make progress. Life is never easy, ESP with both your situations believe me been married 40 years together 42. Cultural Standard 911 says. You work every day of your life, that does say something about you, that you should explore and talk to her about her feelings about that. You've prioritized work ahead of everything else, this is extreme, and not healthy for relationships. She also has significant things going on as well. I would be miserably depressed, if my husband worked every day of our lives. Spatial Granules 12 says. It's a cliche to ask, but have you thought about therapy? I can only imagine the struggle she's in with her mental issues, and you with the pressures of your job, and providing for your family. We're all on the same situation one way or another. You're not alone here, and I hope you get help. Justin of the day 62004 says. Maybe she saw your comment history on here. Halitosis says. It's not you. She has significant mental health issues, and is on multiple meds, probably in three, which are proven libido killers. And that's not going to change. You mentioned PTSD 80% divorce rate in marriages, where one spouse has PTSD, and that other 20% is people desperately holding on to a shit marriage for the sake of the kids. If you are going to stay in your marriage you have to radically change your expectations. You are a provider to your family, a father to your children and a care driver to a mentally ill spouse whose condition prevents her from fulfilling your needs. I know this, because I'm in a very similar situation, and brother it's not a good one. r slash dead bedrooms. Ktown 1971 says. Wife told me last night I should have sex with other people. I'll start by saying I'm no saint. I have a laundry list of issues, and have made bad decisions in my personal life, that have put me where I'm today. We have been together for 10 years, married for 5. It's a second marriage for both of us. The problem started about 4 years ago, when she found out I had cheated on her, and was constantly talking to other women. It also came out then, that she had cheated on me, and we have done a lot of counseling to get through all of that. I know that I have pushed her away, while I work on myself, and we have worked hard to stay together. Our sex life has been pretty much nil for the past 3 years. At this point, she has disassociated our loving relationship and sex. She says she loves me, and wants to be with me, but is very uncomfortable having sex with me. I want sex and I want it with her, but she's telling me that I should find somebody else to have sex with, and she doesn't want to know about it, but she doesn't think she will ever want me sexually. I don't want to have sex with other people, that's what I did before, and I was very unhappy. I want to be happy, and I want her to be happy, but this is frustrating. I accept the responsibility of my decisions, I guess I'm just frustrated at the situation. I love my wife eternally, and would do anything for her. I just needed to vent. Babisavan for life says. Yeah. A lot of that is because of what you did. The relationship needs to be worked on, and repaired before sex can even be a conversation. Dweeble says. Nah. Too much trauma. No kids. Just get divorced. Happiness Beholder says. Get used to not having sex. Fix your relationship and trust. Be faithful and patient. Maybe, maybe you can repair this. But I think, if you want it, you have to go with zero expectations of success. 
be the best husband you can be. Attentive, loving, caring, thoughtful. Then, maybe, she might be ready. Good luck. Harlem 545 says. This one's on you buddy. Fantasa Driven says. Bro, she's traumatized and lost trust. It's scary to get intimate again. She's not gonna be able to do it again. Only a miracle can save this. Trauma can be tricky to heal. But I'll tell you it's karma here. At least you are repenting and trying to make amends and that's all that matters. Loxfi says. How close are you really? Whatever you're doing to keep the love and romance going you need to double up. Essentially. Start over. Go back to the dating phase and start over because you have ruined the foundation of your relationship. It is what it is. Until you fix that foundation you're missing and overlooking a critical piece of intimacy. Trust. It's likely whenever she thinks of having sex with you, she imagines you with the other girl. Tuj Supralova says. It's a trap and a sign that the relationship needs work fix your relationship first. Just my two cent. Kilowatt says. She found out you were cheating and then revealed she'd done the same. So, enough blame for everyone. Normally one might ask why. Why did you step out? Why did she? Whether you to share your answers or not, those are questions that need to be answered. Nobody goes shopping for what they have at home. What I have seen is that when a person shuts off sex from their significant other, or worse yet, tells them to go elsewhere, it signals the end of the relationship by JS Best. From PIE says. I'll be honest, other than being stuck together financially, or with kids zoom out man. Zoom out. A relationship ship where a very important aspect of it is off of the table, and there is, that many cracks in the glass, just doesn't seem like it will work in the long run. Something that I want people to understand very clearly, is that life is actually extremely short. We all live, as though we have endless tomorrows. 10 years just flies by. Trying hard for several years, and then giving up is wasting a lot of time. The real question is, are you able to be faithful, even if you are not getting laid for an extended period of time? If the answer is no, then you have two options, fix your sex life with her, or cheat again, and waste more time. Xniblock Black says. Leave each other before you do some damage that you can't come back from. Street Conflict 9008 says. You both cheated on each other. There are trust issues, and hope you can work them out. Hopefully respect is a two-way street. Hope things will slowly work out for you both. Moscat No says. Rebuilding trust is the hardest thing you can do. Keep being open and patient and maybe it will work out. Good luck. Bajoral3333 says. Sending you good vibes. r slash dead bedrooms buccaneer 37 and 94 w says have you ever wondered if the person you are married to probably isn't meant to be a spouse imho there are certain traits necessary for someone to be an adequate marriage partner characteristics like a somewhat positive body image a certain degree of emotional intelligence a working awareness of past trauma a healthy sexuality and the ability to express desire I'm sure there are others. The lack of any of these qualities can make marriage even more challenging. My spouse does not like her own body and has never expressed desire for me. Those are significant hurdles. I think a thriving marriage requires these qualities to some degree. I wish I would have known this 20 years ago. Super for Dupendad says. Yes I agree. Not everyone is ready for marriage. Early on in my life I tried to change my mentality from trying to find the right one, to being the right one. I worked on myself to be an ideal mate for present and future. I believe the ability to adapt is crucial in any relationship slash marriage. 
we all will struggle with difficulties, and being able to adapt and try to survive, will be a good character trait. It's difficult out there, because we are all pressured to settle down and get married, but many people are not mentally, physically, and emotionally ready. There's never a perfect spouse, but there are qualities to look for that will provide steps to success. Mental health is important. It's a shame it's not widely available in America. Without adequate support, many marriages are doomed to fail. We all need to work on ourselves. Working on past trauma and lies like body issues into our head. If we don't work on that, then we sink ourselves in the relationship. It takes two to make any relationship work. If one person is not working on themselves, then the whole relationship suffers. Thanks for posting this. I relate to this a lot. I wish I had known this also. Yal for this one says. I think for me one of the only qualities that is necessary to be a spouse is a willingness to grow. Becoming aware of past trauma, developing emotional intelligence, communication etc are all things that I think can be worked on. But if the person refuses to recognize room for growth within themselves and work on it, then issues cannot be overcome. Lovely to a fault says. My husband love bombed me, we got engaged, married and had a baby. As soon as this kid came out of my body he has slowly turned into someone I would never in a million years would even think to be with. Doing my best to stake my cash, eliminate all my debt, before I leave him. Mean de Flinders says. I agree with every statement of your post. I thought I wanted something different 20 years ago, and misunderstood his dysfunction as religious piety, which he suggested too. He also misrepresented himself 20 years ago, and admitted that he was faking sexual attraction, because he wanted children. It's hard not to let resentment consume my every waking moment, and I hate it. Mark 995 says. Things changed when we had kids. I feel that much of her energy shifted for me to the kids. Often, I feel like she is a mom first. Appreciating me emotionally and physically just isn't in her top 5 anymore. Verstoppelganger says. She wanted to be a mom first and partner a distant second. Now that our kid is getting into their teenage years, she's now trying to kickstart a career to replace that intense motherly drive. We are roommates, and have been for a long time. Nowhere at all is a discussion of our future together. All the same symptoms you mentioned and nothing I could do to put her in a better state, to build a post-child relationship. This won't last much longer, but I hope that after it does, she may realize some things about herself, and work on them for her own betterment. I know I'm for myself. Quirky Scientist 835 says, Every day for the past few years. One of the pitfalls of getting married so young. I wish I had known then, or someone in my life would have told me to wait. Just a gooey hoping for says. Daily. Zalos says. The reason most men are married to the wrong person and dead bedrooms happen is because of the way men date, especially nowadays. Women typically date until they find someone they like enough and they then want to commit to that person. Men casually date until they decide they are ready for commitment and then seriously date the first person who meets their minimum criteria once they've made that mental decision. Even if it's subconscious. When casual dating they throw away women they could be more sexually and romantically compatible with. I really think that's what's behind this epidemic. Nanotsuj says. My spouse does not like her own body and has never expressed desire for me. Those are significant hurdles. This is my husband, only, I didn't know it until we were married for almost 20 years. We dated for a year before we got married. We saw each other only weekly because of work and my custody schedule. We'd have sex. It was good and he seemed into it. But I realized I was initiating. Every single time. I thought he was being gentlemanly. Boy, was I wrong. The moment we moved in together, his interest in sex 
shriveled up and died. In 20 years, he has initiated sex precisely 5 times. He will claim it's been more, but that's untrue. He says if he says good morning, that means he initiated sex. Um, what? Anyway, I would always have to initiate six, and often, he would try to make excuses, to not have it. If it was not for me, I can promise you our sex life would have been completely dead within a couple of years of getting married. I started to wonder, if maybe he hadn't been honest with me about his sexual orientation. Early on in our marriage, r slash dead bedrooms quirky scientist 835 says is being alone really worse my husband left for work and my youngest left for school early this morning neither will be home until late and i have the entire day to myself at home i had a good workout made a pour over coffee cleaned up a little read a book did some work and joined a zoom meeting walked the dog chatted with a neighbor had a phone call with a friend. I've been blasting Led Zeppelin and just chilling. Made myself a plate of fruit and cheese to snack on. I've spent the whole day thinking that, if this is what single life is, then why am I putting myself through the anguish of trying to keep a marriage together where I just don't really care anymore? Is this unfulfilling? Not any more than my marriage. I don't mind. My own company. I would really love some good sex, but that will be easier to get single than it is married. I have these thoughts constantly, but then my clingy needy husband walks into the room and I feel guilt for considering abandoning him. I'm in my 40s, and in good health, no family history of cancers or other conditions or diseases, parents both alive, and even one grandparent over 100 still alive. No reason why I won't be around for a good long time. Am I really going to do this for another 40 or 50 years? Just venting. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day pretending I'm single, and then tonight I get to be suffocated by a man who can't be bothered to get me off. This is my life. Woods Finder says. I think that depends on what's important to you in life. Some people like the freedom of being alone. Others prefer the companionship and intimacy of having a partner. Of course that means a good partner, that you're a good match with and that provides you more positives than negatives. My personal opinion is that being in a good relationship is much better than being single, but being single is in most ways better than being in a bad relationship. Noel428 says. You are so right, I do this so often. Isaac666 says. I'm sorry. But no, being alone isn't worse. Apparently for you, it would be better. Adwise3359 says. Why would it be worse? Some women and people can't be alone, while others feel great in their own company. The question here is how old is your youngest? You know why this is the question. 40 is young, hormones blasting, even if you don't find anything serious, if separated chances are you will be having a lot of alone chill time, and also some great sex with other people. Left Temperature 369 says. Sounds like you're staying for the kids. I 40 male, would do that same. I couldn't leave, unless my trust was shattered, cheated on. I love them little babies too much to give up waking up with them daily. You and your husband don't have sex anymore, what's up? Human Twist 4136 says. I completely relate to the suffocating feeling. Maleficent 8942 says. If you're only there, because you're scared to be alone then you need to work on that. The absolute best thing you can do for yourself is be alone and find happiness doing it, that way you don't stay in relationships that don't serve you. It's obviously different when you are married with kids and haven't learned to be alone, because of course it's scary. For me, my life is peaceful and happy, my ex added stress, hurt, and pain into my life. I'm happier being alone and at peace than in a relationship that makes me feel unfulfilled. Bruguay82 says. OMG, 
I'm right there with you. I'm starting therapy Monday, because I feel such guilt about wanting to leave. Extra Hench says. I will be 50 this year, and asking myself keep suffering the anguish of staying in a marriage, where I just don't really care anymore. Where all she cares about is her over entitled adult children and her TV shows, definitely not me, definitely not six, and most definitely not sex with me. Otto the thought of watching TV alone at night in my underwear in a little dark bachelor's apartment with empty walls and IKEA furniture. Travlog GPS 2340 says. As someone who's been there, that alone time is a double-edged sword. Cherish the peace, but don't forget to reach out. Loneliness can creep up when you least expect it. OK Reply 899 says. NGL I feel D. K is the easiest thing to get RN. Funny you're worried about him being needy and clingy, but your needs aren't being met. The only person you're doing a favor for is him, and then ask why. Have you brought it up? I left my partner cause of lack of intimacy. He was begging me back, and showed a different side. Sometimes the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Autistic Avoidance says. This is my life as well. I love my own company, and feel like my mental health improves when I'm living independently. It's been a topic of conversation between me and my wife for a couple of years now. And a couple of days ago we both agreed to do it. Today I will be taking the first step towards that and inspecting a new place to live. I told my daughter this morning. But to answer your question, no I don't think you should be expected to do this for another 5 years, let alone 40 or 50. Lurker Anon says. Random question, have you asked him to get you off, if? He is so clingy, tell him to cling to your junk. r slash dead bedrooms. Ok location 5675 says. Stepping out. Finding what I needed, losing it and now the reckoning. You know what I miss? The goddamn deep connection sex. That breathe with me eye contact sex. Where the rhythm is perfect, everything falls away. You two are your entire worlds. And then you smile, giggle, laugh. At what? Nothing tangible. Just the closeness, the cosmic equilibrium. Peace like I've never known. I found it with my app, who I met on this sub last year, after 15 years of zero intimacy with my wife. And then my app had to go no contact due to a single, devastating trauma, that I'm not going to recount here, because of the pain, you can read my various comments. And so here I am, 44 male, who knows his worth, his sex appeal, his emotional maturity, having communicated my unhappiness and desire to divorce my wife. My wife is not a bad person, and I care for her. But I cannot convince her that. My desire for passion, physical connection and playful vulnerability is more important to me than living the rest of our lives as friends and co-parents. For context, I'm a present and loving father, I do all cooking, cleaning, shopping, laundry. I make 6x what she does. I'm aware of the balance of emotional labor in the household and work through it alongside her with patience and partnership. I'm accommodating and friendly, flirty and passionate. We go out to dinner, we go on vacations. I run and lift, and keep in shape. On paper, everything is in its right place. I know she has self-esteem and anxiety issues, that our connection was hit particularly hard by our firstborn. I have never demanded sex, my seduction game is on point and my passion for her was undiminished for years. But her constant rejection of me, the loss of my app, has just made me numb. It makes me feel reckless and despondent. I do not love my wife, even though she appears to be working on the marriage, my talk of divorce seemed to be the catalyst for her, which just makes me angrier. Processing these feelings, while not letting them make me collapse in front of my kids and wife is really, unpleasantly difficult, don't worry, I have two therapists. I've never felt so sad and angry and impotent. 
and so am legit terrified that the work she puts in will bring us to some tolerable status quo, and I will be low grade unhappy forever. I know what my options are, I know how divorce at my age will leave us both financially struggling, at least for a few years, I live on Long Island, which ain't cheap. I just want joyous vulnerable exploratory 6, why doesn't everybody want this? End rant. Him. Another armadillo 52 says. Tolerable status quo, low grade unhappy forever oof, that hit me right in the gut. Think you just put words to a nagging worry I've had the last year or so. Disastrous offer 20 to 70 says. Just suck it up and leave. You write so much about what a great husband and father you are, but you are also a liar, anyone who cheats is a liar. Your wife does not deserve that, no matter how much she has disappointed you. You are not getting what you want out of the marriage and both of you are going to be miserable, if you stay together. Struggling financially isn't the end of the world. Theory 83 says. It is that much worse when, after bringing these things up over and over again, the only thing that seems to move the needle is the word divorce. It just feels like it further reinforces the idea that she isn't in love with you, but in love with the lifestyle you've provided. Now that the rug is getting pulled it has become a big problem for her. Jack Midwest says. On paper, everything is in its right place it sounds like you lucked into finding an affair partner. If everything on paper is in the right place do you not have several other options or at least women who show interest in you regularly that are possible options? And, I am, 44 male, who knows his worth do you know your worth, or are you still riding the validation from the affair? Honest question. Smitty225 says. It's almost as bad as the assholes that put towels on the lounge chairs at the pool at 6.30am. R slash dead bedrooms. Drycloud5014 says. Attention young people. I've read numerous posts today of people in their 20s in a dead bedroom situation. My advice to all is this, do not remain in these relationships. If you are high libido, and your partner is lines, you are setting yourself up for years of disappointment, frustration, anger, regret, etc. Do you want to be 10 years into a relationship? possible with children, and be sexually miserable? Before you move in with someone or get married, make sure that you are sexually compatible, because the pain of rejection, arguing about sex, etc. is just awful. Shadi510 says. If there is no children. Run. Unwrapped69y says. Agreed, but this applies to any and all ages and relationships. Never accept a dead bedroom. Ashtonix says. It just sucks, because for the first couple years we were compatible, so you think you're good, young and enjoying life, then suddenly you're in your 20s in a dead bedroom, that you thought, would never have a chance of happening until old age. I didn't see it coming from a mile away. Equivalent Road 9612 says. Make damn sure too. The bait and switch is real. I haven't had a BJ in 17 years. Selection or 3078 says. Many stay because they fear not finding someone new, and because of all the good things they'd lose, by leaving I miss my STBXW every day, but I'm hopeful about finding new partners that actually want to touch me and love me. Curious Laws 2001 says. This is also why people should not wait until marriage to have sex. OK Freedom 6449 says. Very sound advice. 42HLM says. Bingo. Granted. Secretary declines sometimes when kids come for the first few years as they are draining. But it will not get amazingly better. Many Beyond 7013 says. This is how I feel right now. We have a child together it's hard. Alex Mikesis says. Yes rum. Braxid says. 
I completely agree, but what if you love a person more than life itself, and you also agreed to have sex only after marriage for the sake of purity and other shit? And then, after marriage, there is no way to go back and divorce because you already have children, religion, social circle, and obligations. You should have thought about it earlier, at the dating stage, and now that's it, the train has left. A Atropinus says. But how do you know, if it's just a phase or already a dead bedroom? Connect Isopod 8239 says. Seeing if you're sexually compatible really does absolutely nothing for anyone though 90% of the stories I read here start with we had the most amazing sex life at the beginning including mine I think another test to gauge long term sexual compatibility is to ask what are their thoughts about dead bedrooms and failing sex lives if they are mature enough to even discuss it what they would do if they found themselves in one or creating one, if they think they will truly value a healthy sex life, even when they are tired, or busy or have kids etc, and what they think it looks like for a sex life to grow, and mature over time, and through age and life changes. And even then that's just words. I asked my husband this about 5 months into our relationship, and he said he never wanted to end up that way, he sees it kills relationships and marriages. Yet here we are so basically we can't win no matter what, and I think people just get lucky with spouses, who don't switch up down the line. One small plant says. And I would just add, that making sure you are sexually compatible includes actually having experienced improvement following times, when things are bad I speak from experience. When my now ex-husband, and I first got together, we had a ton of sex. We were teenagers, and I think we both assumed that we both had high libidos for over 10 years in the middle of our relationship, our sex life totally tanked, only having sex a handful of times a year, and yet somehow, I managed to convince myself that this was the anomaly, and that our normal state of being was the way we'd been as teenagers we can convince ourselves of a lot of things to bring about the outcomes that we want. I just wanted to stay with my husband. I wanted to think that the relationship was going to work. I would have absolutely insisted that we were still totally compatible, even though I was growing increasingly desperate for sex, and he was growing increasingly determined to avoid me. I hit a breaking point when I realized, in my late 30s, that there was a pretty decent chance that, if I stayed in this relationship, I would die without ever having sex again. Once that relationship was over, it took me a long time of looking back on it to be able to see how much I had fooled myself. Too long, didn't read, recognizing if you are sexually compatible requires the ability to be truly honest with yourself and your partner. R slash dead bedrooms. Future reformer boss says. I'm going for it. I've decided to actively start looking for an affair partner. I don't want to hear anything about how it's a bad idea, I should just leave, I'm a terrible person etc. Trust me, I've gone over everything already. What I've realized in this search is 1. It's difficult. 2. I'm probably pickier than I ought to be in 3. I'm lonelier and more depressed for it. The realization that, so many people would have sex with me, and the one person I truly want it from can't even bring themselves to try really messes with me. It's also made me realize, that he probably never intended on being in a relationship with me. For him, we were likely just going to hook up, and be friends and that was it. But what can I say, I'm too lovable, and I reeled him in. Just can't keep him sexually interested in me. Of course this is my own conclusion but it fits. However, with all this, it's also made me realize, I can have sex again, and I can separate the two aspects. For that I'm grateful for lack of a better word. I guess I'm going to hell now, if I wasn't already. Isim2309 says. If you're going to hell, it fine, I'm driving the bus. Adventurous Post 957 says. Since joining this sub a few months ago, I was and still am shocked at how many women are in DBS. Maybe I'm just ignorant, but I thought it was mostly men who have trouble getting laid, you know, like Iral. 
Lollipop Kiskis says. Been here. Then into a two and a half year long affair we fell in love with each other. The distance was so much, and I couldn't leave my partner. Hearts were destroyed. But I don't regret it. Do what you need to do. Life is short. Wonderlist Wolf 1697 says. I think you have to do what you think is best for you. At a certain point you need to prioritize your well-being ahead of anything else. Mitchell Orca 26 c 82 says. Wow, really? An affair partner, huh? As if that's going to solve anything in your dead bedroom. Let me guess, you've already tried the just leave advice, and it just didn't work for your situation, right? Well, let me tell you, getting an affair partner is just trading one dumpster fire for another. You think it's going to be all steamy and exciting, but just wait until the guilt and the potential fallout start kicking in. Trust me, you're better off just ripping off the band-aid and leaving the relationship altogether. At least then you'll have a chance at finding someone who actually wants to be intimate with you. Content Resource 8741 says. No judgment, you have to do what's best for you, both mentally and physically. Until someone has walked in your shoes and lived with the pain of indifference and rejection, they just can't understand. Situations like this are rarely black and white but various shades of grey. Take care of yourself on this path, Opus. Sending you all the love, and, yes, support, on finding your own piece of happiness. East Leg 3000 says. Best of luck to you. I'm in the same boat, and no decision is an easy one. 69 Certum 69 says. I understand completely, I got along for considering it, but the lack of any effort on her part to address the situation plus the lack of even acknowledging my attempts on Valentine's Day, anniversary of us meeting her in a dead bedroom situation at the time, and my birthday has brought me to the point of accepting this is how it's going to be, and actively looking for someone in a similar situation. So we can fulfill our needs that aren't being met by our partners. Worry Ass Rock 2022 says. I'm not judging. Trust me. But is there a medium? Maybe not physically cheat? Just find an outlet? No Mix 9367 says. Do whatever makes you happy and is best for you. No judgment. Good luck. Murd Thompson says. As someone who's been cheating on, just leave. Jeeves585 says. I've been working out of town and thinking the same. Human Twist 4136 says. Cheering you on, go for it. Zahiriously says. Good luck. I have been thinking doing the same, but I feel I will hurt myself more as it will define who I am. If I ever decide to go with someone else, I will end my relationship first. One day you will find the one, and you being a cheater in your past, no matter the good excuse you might have slash had, will define your values into the next relationship. If you are aware of this, then I wish you good luck and hope you find what you are looking for. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.